people, my people, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We don't come again, no, we don't bring get information. We'll be saying, and if you hear them, you go like that. And now, victory hot, and then they bring them come to you. I beg you, go help us to share, help us to like, and help us to subscribe. I beg. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, media. Please, um, yeah. let me get the hands up. Yeah. Media, can you hear me, please? Yes, I found it down now. We can hear you. I saw a lot of you writing that you can't see the video. Um, the video you were to see was the Prime Minister and our head office there. That we did not share the screen of another video. So these are the two videos you were supposed to see on the screen. Thank you so much. Um, Mkaja, Okpa, unmute yourself. You have your hand up. Mkaja, we cannot hear you. Oh, oh brother, sorry, you called me? Yeah, your hand was up. That's why I called. Oh, okay. No, I was uh, because I couldn't see the video, so I was you know, begging you to open the video for me. I couldn't see, you know, the, 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 the I couldn't camera, see the know. dancing. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. That's your camera. That's your camera now. That's your camera. Anyone that needs camera open, please. You may start your camera now. You may start your camera now. You may start your camera now. All right. You may start your camera now. All right. Uh, we have a Zion. Over to you. Your hand is up. Please, you can support the PM's dance. You can support uh, our elders' dance there from our head office. Uh, Adazion, over to you. Thank you, Mr. Chief. Well, my PM, Okay, I'm going to make it six in for J in J ma. One, two, three, four, five, six. In J ma for my PM. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do we still have more hands up? No. All right, we continue. Okay. Diana, over to you. Okay, thank you. Mm. Yeah. Mary Bland, that one is done. The next is on the agenda is keynote address by Prime Minister, His Excellency, Mazu Simon Iban Njako, Abadobie, Agune Chamber 1 of Biafra. Please join me all as we beckon on this great alchemist of our Biafran freedom. PM Mazi Simon Iban, I salute and you're welcome. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Honorable Member, the Rep of the North and South America, uh, Pharmacist Diana Ene. Thank you very much for the work you've done so far. I welcome every one of you from the United States of America, Biafrans, friends of Biafrans in the United States, and those who have joined us this evening from all over the world. I welcome all of you to this town hall meeting. I remember that I promised that every two weeks I will be coming to the United States to give special update to you in the United States as we progress in the going to be very, very exceptional, very special update that I have for all of you. I have come to announce today that the liberation of Biafra has entered 
the ruthless, ruthless stage where our enemies will be dealt with ruthlessly. We have directed the Biafra Defense Forces that going forward, the Nigeria, its army, its police will be with the ruthlessness in Biafra territory. Going forward, we know no friends, we know no brother, we know no siblings, so long as you carry arms in Biafra land against Biafra people, we will treat you as enemy without mercy. That particular stage starts tonight as we enter the seat at home tomorrow to demonstrate yet again that Nigeria has been delegitimized within Biafra territory. Our seat at home starts tomorrow. And this is at home will happen on the 29th, the 30th, the 31st, and on the 2nd of August. We will be looking forward to see that every government, houses, every offices, everything Nigeria government will be shut down. If we see anybody representing Nigeria opening anything in Biafra territory, we will engage that place. We have to make our stand very, very clear. To the Nigeria state that as we approach the December 2nd declaration, we will continue them to make sure that terrorism will be wiped away and eradicated in Biafra territory completely. While other people in Nigeria, other ethnic groups, other indigenous nationalities in Nigeria are crying without help, we are not going to cry. Like I have said, the Biafra Defense forces has been well briefed. When you engage enemy, there is no mercy. You do not engage human beings. The people that come with arms, armor tanks, helicopter, fighter jets to kill and bombard our territory are not human beings. Do not regard them. Do not treat them as human beings. They are not. Kill them before they kill you. It is the highest self-defense that we have witnessed for the past two weeks the worst situation in Biafra territory where houses, villages are being bombarded and burnt down. The defense force proved that their capability to defend our land and they have proven that lost for the evening. After the emergency security briefing, we have come to Biafra people that going forward, you are going to be seeing wonders in Biafra territory. Do not move. This is a war that have declared on us, and we are not going to shy away from this war. We have accepted this challenge. We have been able to prove that the Biafra Defense Force are well prepared, even with little equipment. We have been able to continue to decimate Nigeria, neutralize these terrorists, and they will never, ever strive in our land. Remember, the people in the United States, the reason we are doing this, coming to you every second week, is for you to understand that you have a very important role to play in the liberation of Biafra. Do not listen to any threat coming from the Nigeria state. Do not listen to the names they call you. Do not listen to the names they call me. Do not listen to whatever they brand you, profile you. All you should be listening to is and the pattern of the Biafra Republic government in exile and the Biafra de facto government in the homeland. Today, I am very, very pleased to announce to you in the United States that the Biafra self-referendum has recorded over 49 million votes. I don't think anybody in the world will listen to that and ignore it. Over 49 million votes. And still counting. This is the second of the I'm telling you today, what world will be forced to listen and organize their own if they are not satisfied with the Biafra Republic of Tinexa self-referendum. We are not shying away from fighting Nigeria, defending ourselves. But like I said, going forward, any terrorists in the military uniform in Biafra land carrying gun, when you get them, do not treat them like human beings. They are not human beings. And that's the difference. That is the briefing, destruction that have been given to us. So going forward, whatever images you see, do not move. It is a fight to finish. We are fighting for survival. And let me tell you, in a war, you do not see your enemy as a human. And that's the difference we're going to make going forward. 
So when Nigeria think that we are going to sit in our comfort zone in Europe, America, and watch our people being extinct, be, being killed, neutralized on daily basis, burn our villages, and keep quiet and continue to agitate on social media, that time is over. And everybody that is supporting this government must be very proud of how far we have gone. The yeah, France in the United States, I can assure you that so far so good, we've met with decision makers, policy makers, influential politicians in the United States, both in the Congress and in private institutions. We've met many of them, and I can assure you that when Wanza, Ihanapo Wanza Nanibu is dancing, there is something that is playing music. I'm telling you today, Nobody will defeat Biafra this time around. And it, it is going to depend on your and your support. We need to come together for those who are standing on the fence, thinking that, let, what I do. let us watch if we're going to be part of Nigeria or not. Let's see if they're they are going to protest in Nigeria. I am telling you today, you are wasting your time. The opportunity is here for you to come on board and continue to be part of the history that we are making. For this reason, we have created a private meeting possibility to meet myself privately, especially those of you in the United States. If you have something that is bothering you, which is the reason you are yet to support the liberation after having seen the progress that Biafra, the facto government, and the Biafra government in exile with the Biafra Defense Forces has made. That particular concern you have, the opportunity has been created for you to book an appointment for a private meeting. Meeting that will not be aired anywhere. Meeting that will be confidential. The confidentiality is to the highest maximum. And you are going to have the opportunity to interact with me personally to know what your problems are and why you are yet to support the Afro. This opportunity is from the United States. And it is going to be happening on a weekly basis. So if you have your friends in your Igbo union or in your organization, okay, I'm telling you, oh, I have issues why I have not supported Biafra, telling him that the opportunity is here. It is not time you are going to be sitting somewhere and be murmuring and thinking that we are going to fail. We are not going to fail. The only thing is that the opportunity may, may not come again at the end of the day, and Biafra policy will deal with you. So my people in the United States, because of the, the state we are entering now, as we approach December 2nd, the declaration of the restoration of independence of Biafra, which is going to take place on the 2nd of December, as we approach that December, we need resources, we need funds to be able to defend ruthlessly the Biafra land and make sure that we evict every presence of Nigeria even before December 2nd, for this reason, we need to up our game. Upping our game is not by the weekly fundraising, which actually have done its part and we continue to do, but to step a bit forward to make sure that we have every equipment that is needed. Having the equipment is not the problem, but the fund continues to be challenged. And I have to inform all of you that in a war like this, that we are fighting for survival, it requires money, it requires fund, it requires resources. Just like you see on another part of the world in Ukraine, we are not different. Ukraine is actually, we are facing more threat than Ukraine. Because in our own, we Nigeria has you know declared a war and the war is being for secret. And what we are going to be doing going forward is to make sure we bring the result of this war that Nigeria has declared on us to the public by making sure we are publishing the result of how the Biafrans are defending themselves by neutralizing these enemies. So, on this note, the people in the United States will, you know, look for to better the funding of liberation, and we have a solution. And the solution is on this day, privilege, to unveil the Biafra Republic government in Ezai, have the privilege to unveil a very strategic way to raise our defense fund 
in this day town hall meeting i may i present to you ladies and gentlemen the biafra i o u loan the biafra government in exile hereby unveil the biafra I which is going to be the game changer in the liberation of biafra immediate team over to you to enable the government to sustain its defense. For these reasons, we are introducing the land in a special IOU loan in addition to our weekly bond raising. Land Bridge is a special IOU loan to get 100% interest and certificate when Biafra comes and also be a part of the generation that has risen to restore freedom, which is our inalienable right to life, hope, dignity, and honor. For more information, go to www.biafrarepublicgov.org slash IOU. Biafra Republic Government in Exile, on behalf of the Bank of Biafra, is hereby declared open. And you do not have any reason to say you are yet to support Biafra financially. What this IOU mean is that if you invest 50,000 50, agents in as soon as Biafra is restored, it will be doubled and repaid back to you. Those who have funded Biafra liberation up to this point, we have the record of everybody. And the Biafra government has a package for every Biafra who has participated in the weekly fundraising up to date. The package is something that is very overwhelmed when you hear about it. And we're gonna make it public very, very soon when we have done with the plan and the strategies that this will be done. So this does not interfere in any way. The weekly fundraising, as you know, it is only that we are looking forward to expand the approach of the declaration in December. I want everyone to understand that what we are going to do to Nigeria as well to you will never believe it will be worse than what is happening in Sudan. Mark my word. And at the, at the end, Biafra will come. I want you to understand that those who stood on the way of Biafra freedom will die one after the other. And it is happening. And when they die, there is no remorse. We do not know mercy. This is a fight for survival, a fight for the right to live of our people, of generation, of millions, 80 million Biafrans. So not the uh, corrupt politicians, not the selfish politicians, one person of zero point zero percent of the people that are representing Nigeria within Biafra territory will truncate and make us change our mind. My fellow Biafrans in the United States, if you have families back home, remember to inform them this evening that the seat at home, civil disobedience that will be observed like never before in Biafra history since 2021 will start tomorrow. The game is on. Do not fall a victim of Nigeria propaganda where you will be killed. What you have here is a symbol which only you saw during the 2020 NSAS protest. For those of you who may remember, this symbol and this thing is back. What it signifies is danger. Do not mess with our freedom. You will go down for it. 
Today, our land will continue to swallow those who have come to kill our women and children. Do not be afraid of anybody. Do not be scared of what Nigeria state have threatened to do to you. Believe me, they will kill us. We will kill them. At the end, the hell will come. I want to use this opportunity to call on our lobbies, Elias, Elias to come in here and have a, a few minutes to address the United States, the Bia France in the United States. Uh, please, the media team, if Elias is here, can you uh, give him the mic? Yeah, he's here. Um, let me let me give him the co-host, uh, right? One minute. Okay. And uh, Elias, the, uh, you've got, you've got Andres, the co-host. Please, I know this is not uh, part of your program, but, uh, you know, I crave your indulgence to allow uh, Elias to give us just uh, two minutes or three minutes of summary of what we have achieved this week because the achievements is nothing to write home about. In fact, it is overwhelmed. When you know what we have done this week, we've met highly, highly you know, placed individuals in the United States and the result is, is, is overwhelming. You know, like I said, and I will to uh, minute to address all of you in the United States because it is because of you that we are able to make this happen. So we'll continue to break the doors. This week we are entering, we're gonna be it's gonna be another uh you know powerful week. A lot of programs, a lot of meetings are taking place. And just within a month of having the lobbyist firm, we have been able to break doors in the United States Congress and many U.S. Uh, organization. So, Elias, I welcome you. Just two minutes of your time because actually you are not officially in the program. But you know, we use every opportunity we have and uh, to tell our people what is going on. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. Yes, when I saw that you were doing uh, the, the, the town hall, I just thought uh, that I should just come on and perhaps say some remarks and say hello to all my uh, Biafran uh, friends. So uh, great to see you, Mr. Prime Minister, uh, uh, and, and all of the guests here today. Uh, hello to all of you. As the Prime Minister has uh, noted, we had an extraordinarily eventful week. Uh, many of you have probably uh, seen many of these activities on the Prime Minister's Twitter, ha Twitter handle, his X handle, uh, and it was extremely significant. Um, we've uh, the chief of our wonderful chief of staff. Uh, uh, was in Washington, D.C. Uh, I took her to see some element of uh, policymakers. We had an important uh, meeting with Congressman John Carter of Texas, who was very sympathetic to our cause. And uh, we briefed him on the accomplishments of the Brady government, on the great leadership of the prime minister, uh, and also spoke very bluntly about the criminal nature of the Nigerian government and uh, we got some very strong commitments of support from him. He's another friend of uh, Biafra. Uh, we also had, and the prime minister made a tweet about it. And prime minister, I'm glad to see it's over now over 100,000 views. Uh, an important meeting with Ambassador Tibor Nagy, uh, who was a very senior official in the State Department for many decades, uh, former U.S. ambassador to Ethiopia. Ethiopia. He was the assistant secretary of African affairs under uh, President Trump between 2018 to 2021. And we had a very emotional uh, meeting with him. Uh, and and we, we were uh, able to speak to him for, I believe, over an hour. And he's someone who's very important because uh, uh, if the Republicans win in November, uh, I believe he'll have an even more senior uh, position in the next State Department. So we've a lot of positive uh, in our meetings, uh, a, a lot of, and, and I'm not mentioning everything. I'm just mentioning a few things from this, this week and other meetings with senators and congressmen and so forth. I'm just uh, relaying from the past few days. And we've privately gotten some very strong commitments. In fact, a lot of them have said, why haven't you guys, uh, why haven't the Biafrans approached us sooner? Um, no one's ever brought this to our attention. So uh, you know, as, as the Bible says, ask and you shall receive, you know, so all, all we have to do is ask. We're now making our requests 
and it's being received uh, very well. Uh, I think it's important. Uh, uh, this is what I have to understand is uh, for the United States to assist by Afro, there needs to be a formal request. Uh, there needs to be an explanation of the situation. For some, you know, it, the analogy I would be if you to a restaurant, you don't order off the menu and then you blame the restaurant for not giving you food, right? You have to tell the U.S., the international community, hey, this is the problem and this is what we want you to do. It's, it's that simple. And we're doing it and we're doing it successfully and we're making a uh, uh, huge spray. And also, I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention I had the great honor on Thursday of visiting the Biafra headquarters in, in, in Maryland and meeting with the uh, with the diaspora. You have a marvelous headquarters of Maryland uh, prime minister, and it, it's, I think, a testament to the achievement of the government. And I was greeted with the most wonderful hospitality uh, and, and graciousness, and, and I appreciate the, the, the warmth I've received from many uh, Biafrans uh, so far. Uh, you have a beautiful headquarters. I, I, you know, I think it's a testament to your leadership prime minister and the, the achievements of this government. And I, I enjoyed interacting with and learning from uh, the Biafran diaspora. And in the evening, I hosted a get together with uh, some diasporans uh, here in Washington, D.C. And we're going to do many more of these. And I think this is a chance where the diaspora can learn from from us in terms of our uh, uh, political activities. But we and myself can also learn from the diaspora. And we're going to be working more closely with the diaspora. I'm sure you saw the prime minister's tweet about uh, how the government is going to start to uh, interview people for political directors. We're going to be creating a political pack. Uh, and so our firm is going to uh, assist with the creation of a proper uh, infrastructure here in the United States in order to get the grassroots properly organized and mobilized. And our both myself and my firm are going to help with that. And we're going to work very closely where all the um, grassroots energy can be channeled in an effective manner. So uh, I just want to say this has been a great honor. Uh, we're making enormous progress in just the first month, and uh, we'll be making much more uh, progress in the months ahead. Uh, you know, I think we're going to be delivering some very big, uh, big surprises for the zoo the next uh, few months. They're, they're not going to know what's hitting them. I mean, they're already very, uh, you know, um, devastated by what we're doing, you know. It's very worried. In fact, I'm, you know, you might have seen uh, some of these think tanks in the zoo are writing these letters complaining to the U.S. government. Oh, you know, what is this lobbying and we don't like it and so forth. So clearly what we're doing is uh, scaring them and uh, they should be scared, as I've said in the town hall on Thursday. So uh, once again, it's a great honor, Prime Minister. I appreciate you indulging me uh, in, in making my uh, brief remarks. And I just thought to say hello since you were conducting this call. And thank you again for uh, the opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Elias. Uh, thank you. And then let's continue. And also, I would like to inform uh, the Biafrans in the United States, uh, you know, that uh, very soon, uh, the, uh, we are, of course, uh, that is not something I want, I want to announce here. So it's, it's going to be a private thing. <laughs> so let me not. <laughs> Thank you. Unmute yourself, Diana. No, no, unmute yourself. Yeah, thank you. Please give a standing ovation to our prime minister and all of this in the house. Thank you and welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next. Uh, Diana, just, uh, Diana, just uh, before, you, before you continue, just before you Bye. continue, Diana, just before you continue, sorry, just for, uh, one, one uh, few seconds. Uh, everybody can uh, hear our lobbyist, uh, you know, uh, explaining what we find out. Oh, we found out that these people has been waiting for us to approach them. Nobody have approached these people for many years. And I wonder, you know, well, I don't know, but the uh, your officials 
we've met so far are only hearing stories. Progress in peace while your spirit continue to fight on an important cause as we take that very.